I'm struggling with how I should start this video. I want to take a look at how much AI has progressed in the 3D world. 2D AI visuals have been in the spotlight from the start of this innovation wave, if you will, but I think for designers the real disruption will come from AI capabilities in 3D. And how much it's going to be disrupted, the field, but I mean, will depend on the complexity of the field itself, right? For example, game designers will and are currently disrupted more than architects because the constellation of uh, factors and fields that the architect works with is much, much broader, if that makes sense, right? So what I want to do is I want to see where are we at right now? Because one year ago, you couldn't really do anything in 3D with AI, maybe some, some convex blobs, but, but that's kind of it. And for this, for this, I will be using a tool that's called Rodin AI. Uh, let's just switch here. Rodin AI, uh, which is a paid tool. You need to pay for it, but it does have like a free trial. I'll talk about the price and the value of this uh, in a bit, probably at the end of the video, but for now, let's see how it works and what it can do. All right, so the first thing that you will see once you, you know, start it up is all of the example files here, clearly. You know that, that we're, we're done with Rodin AI, but let's not look at them. Let's actually generate our own because that's, at least for me, is what's most important is the seamlessness of it all to see if it's actually seamless. Here you can see that there are two options. There's this plus sign or in text input. If I click this plus sign, then it asks me to give it an image. Um, so it can generate stuff from your own images, uh, 2D images, or you can just type it in what you want, right? So I'm just going to give it a prompt of um, modern, let's do furniture, modern chair, uh, and let's do something funky. Uh, that is made out of mushrooms. Tick mark that. And it generates a few images for you. And these are very small images. And uh, let me just, hold up, give me, you know. But basically then you can just keep regenerating until you find an image that works for you. And I'll just give it a few. Oh, I like this one. This one's kind of nice. Um, sure, I'll, I'll prove this, so I tick mark this. Once this is done, I have my own image. I can also generate another one, right, to uh, match the two styles together, or mash the two styles together, but I don't need to do that. In this case, I'm just going to hit generate. There we go. And once it is done, we are presented with a draft image of a, of a chair that is made out of mushrooms, right? This is a draft model, you don't need to pay for it and you have your a bunch of redos that you can use. In this case, for some reason, it is uh, creating symmetry even though here it's, uh, the symmetric geometry is not selected. I'm not sure what, what's up with that. Anyway, let, let's just go for a redo just to show you how, how fast it kind of iterates through different variations of the 3D model. Okay, after six refreshes, I am left with something like this, which I, eh, it's, it's okay, uh, we, we can use this. And I had to change a few things. So the first thing that I changed was, I actually enabled uh, symmetric geometry, because if you can't beat them, join them. Uh, everything with uh, symmetry, in this case, just seemed to look more aesthetically pleasing, so I kept it. And then the next thing was, I, aid, uh, I added in, uh, chair made out of mushrooms to the geometric description because it basically just reads the image and it describes the image to itself of what it should generate and then I added an asymmetric just in hopes of it breaking up but it really didn't help uh, so asymmetric could just be removed either way once this is done this is the first time when you actually need to need to pay and this is where you confirm right if uh, I specify that I want this object to be made out of, uh, I can specify, sorry, how many polygons I want this object to be made out of. In this case, I will use the highest one, uh, highest amount, which is 30,000, because um, th this, is, this requires a lot of polygons, right? And once that is done, um, I will be spending three credits, or in this case, one credit, there's a discount to generate the final 
uh, 3D model, right? So this is the first instance where you pay. While this is generating, I can talk about the, the payment. Uh, basically, uh, three credits, you can think about it as uh, three and a half dollars, almost four dollars for one asset, right? And then you will need to pay one more credit for the uh, material you know, to generate the material. So it's four credits in total, four credits, a little bit higher than $4 uh, to get, you know, an, a 3D generated asset. This is the geometry that I get. Hey, that, that's pretty decent, huh? And what you can do with this, by the way, that I find to be very, very interesting is you can go to mesh editor and probably I should move here. Bam. You can go to the mesh editor here and you can actually sculpt on top of the geometry to make uh, fine adjustments, right? So they have sculpting tools uh, implemented here. It's a nice, I don't know, I, I find it to be quite interesting uh, that this work between, I'll just confirm it, uh, this kind of work between the human hand and AI generated stuff going back and forth. So it's not just all AI generated. Well, this is generating or solving or whatever is saving. Um, this Rodin AI, uh, as much I, as I searched, as much as I know, uh, uses open uh, database to for for as for the training data. So there's no stealing from the artists involved in creating these uh, images as well as these uh, 3D models. So I'm I'm very happy to also see that. Anyway, uh, once this is done, uh, the next step is to generate the materials. Uh, you can, of course, add in more images to generate, you know, fancier materials. But for now, I'm just showing you the basics, right? Uh, just to not get convoluted. For uh, you can choose how close the PBR temperature should be, how close the reference strength of the image, you know, how far away can it steer from the reference strength. In this case, I'm just going to generate it um, with default values because we care that, you know, it, it's as seamless as possible. Up until now, we have spent four dollars uh, on this on this chair and while this is generating it takes a little bit of time I want to talk about topology usually uh, these kind of a uh, uh, how's it called uh, wrapping algorithms usually they use uh, marching cubes algorithm to wrap a point cloud around and so on but in this case it seems like they're using a, a something uh, some some sort of a quad remesher later to clean up the topology and the topology seems to be quite nice. Okay, so now we have ourselves uh, a chair that is wrapped around with with some some mushrooms and so on. And here in the preview, I can change this to PBR preview to see better how it looks like with the shiny materials and, and like the shininess of it. And you know. In terms of the complexity of the texture itself, perhaps this is not the best example out there to, to show, but you know, it does show. So if I were to go to my, let's go for uh, stuff, other, fun 3D, I'm just going to use this, uh, one, one of these uh, geometries that, uh, not geometries, images that I have, and I'm going to regenerate the, the texture based on on this particular material, you'll see that now my um, textures will, of course, follow the new input. So the topology I'm pretty impressed with. I'm uh, pretty impressed of the flexibility of you know how much you can input of your own stuff and then generate. And uh, you know you're not so reliant on the text. I'm very impressed with. Oh, that's not bad. We've got the, the little edges here and so on. And so let, let's look at it as a tune material. Uh, tune is a little bit uh, shaded material, sorry. That ain't bad. Okay, I'm, I'm happy with this. So I'm, I'm quite, for now it's, it's quite a seamless procedure, right? And then once I'm done, I can just pack this as a FBX file or a BJ or STL file, doesn't really matter. If you're 3D printing, you should use STL file and then you just send it to print. Maybe that's what we should do. Let's print this. Let, let's, let's 3D print this. So if you just want to print it, you just select STL, but in my case, I'll select, uh, let's go for uh, FBX. Base model, high poly, please. Uh, high poly geometry packed into FBX. And oh yeah, and I forgot to confirm the material. 
my bad. Okay. And once that is done, I can then choose uh, what kind of textures I want. So PBR and 4K textures, please. And I can hit the download, right? So it's going to generate. While this is generating, you can also share your stuff, right? And uh, you, you can showcase your stuff in a cool way with this cool animation, right? Um, which, which is literally um, MP4 file that you can download and you can share to uh, to public, you know, of, of your geometry. Also, you can publish it directly to Sketchfab, uh, which is, you know, I guess it's it's nice. Uh, I'm scared that it's going to flood Sketchfab with 3D generated, uh, or sorry, AI generated um, shapes, but as long as they are of decent quality, why not? Um, I think that has downloaded, right? Yeah, that has downloaded. The, let's take a quick look at it. Right click, extract, take a look here. Um, we have our textures that are, yeah, that's, that's typical, uh, texture packing by an algorithm. And then we have our high poly FBX file that I can just open up here in Rhino, right? If I look at it in Rhino, the topology looks actually pretty damn good. And then if I just create a PBR uh, material, I, I add it in the, the textures and this is how it looks like. I mean, that ain't too bad, ain't gonna lie. So of course you can't have it as the main thing, you know, in the, like the front of the scene, but somewhere in the back of the scene, Hey, this is pretty damn good. Right? So that's, uh, that's the chair. I'm, I'm going to 3d print it as well. I'll show it at the, at the end of the video. So that's, that's a four, $4 asset. Another way of how I can do this is if I click this plus sign, I can choose whichever 3d, uh, 2d drawing I have. Uh, what's a simple one so that it's, it shows up correctly. Oh, let's do our taco. Remember taco, our, our, our mascot for the channel. Uh, let's do our taco, uh, taco, uh, octopus. And let's just see what kind of a 3d model can it generate. And let's just put him on the chair. So that's going to be another $4. I'm going to print both of them together. There we go. Damn. All right. Okay, now as we have our uh, 3D 3D shape, I kind of want to adjust it a little bit, so I'll go to the mesh editor, you know, and, and do do some some really really simple simple adjustments. Okay, so once this is done, we have ourselves uh, adjusted uh, 3D model, uh, which is already generated and I can generate the textures for it. And I'm just going to use exactly the same, the same model. Uh, you can see some issues with uh, wrapping uh, UV seams uh, that are fine. Uh, it did understand the positioning of the eyes quite well, but it didn't understand the glossiness, uh, you know, the gloss. So of course, this is still not a mature uh, tool. This is quite useful for when you just need an octopus somewhere in the back of the of the room, right? And in your 3D scene and you really don't need the that level of detail. You just need the silhouette and kind of the correct color range. Really useful. I'm just going to get him in here, import file, bam. We have ourselves a little octopus that should be rotated. There it is. There it is. And hey, it doesn't look that bad. It really doesn't. For a background asset, this is in my opinion, quite, quite acceptable, right? So any kind of industry that is purely art or the closer industry comes to artistic expression or pure visuals, such as game development or game design, these kind of assets, I feel like are already at a level where they are able to disrupt for industries that are more manufacturing focused or ergonomy focused, for instance, furniture design, right? This kind of a chair in a, for a furniture designer will not disrupt the work of a furniture maker yet, uh, simply because there's much more, uh, the system is much more complex in what the AI has to do for this to be a feasible design, right? Uh, manufacturing costs, uh, how do you, uh, 
the, the ergonomics of the, you know, the position of the body, and, and I, I won't get into that. This is further along than I have expected. It's uh, not scary. It's weird. It's weird because I'm not used to this kind of a workflow. It's fast. It's really fast. I don't have, when I do this, I don't have time to think. Or maybe I'm not giving myself time to think. I will need to reflect on that. I feel like the lack of contemplation in between the iterations of the design that I make might be a problem, but that just might be me um, not, not thinking this through correctly. In terms of the price, $8 for both, around $8, Let, let's go for 10, just, 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 you know, for the sake of argument, $10 for both. I think that is worth it if you're working on a commercial project. Um, if you're working on a personal project, depends on the skill set that you have as an artist, as an, uh, as an architect or as an engineer, right? It, it depends on your skill set. If your skill set is pretty high and you're really quick at modeling or sketching things out, um, then $10 is becoming a little bit of a hard sell. But if you're in a studio and you just need those background assets, makes perfect sense. Um, the, you know, the pricing makes perfect sense. I'll, of course, leave a link uh, for this in the video description below. You can check it out. Um, you get seven days free trial uh, to test it out. Uh, you get 30 credits, which results in like eight models or something like that. And keep in mind that only once you are satisfied with the sketch 3D model, do you start generating the final one for which you pay, right? So just trying things out, uh, the credits are not being kind of used so that that's kind of nice um i will do an update video on this in a year because this is moving also at a very very rapid pace right yeah I'll, i i i have so many things to reflect on anyway i'll see you in the next one um i'll i'll, I'll show you the 3d printed pictures of of this this bad boy uh, in the outro I'll see ya. Bye.